And welcome back and uh, really appreciate you tuning in to Morning Live. But let's take a look at our question of the day now. So earlier on, uh, we asked you, and this of course relates to the protest action in Westbury. And we asked you, how should government be more proactive in communities instead of only reacting to these violent protests? Right, let's see what people are about to say this morning. Golani saying the government must just deliver services as they promised during the campaign for elections. Uh, this one from at Nkosi Clive says uh, they must visit the communities more often and find out what the problems of the community are and not stay in their luxury offices. Uh, the queen of everything, Taryn Daniels, saying they can't. Lack of thorough governance is why we are here. Let's vote in a new government. At uh, Tlo Tlako says, uh, it pains me a lot to realize that our government is always reactionary. The main problem is not hands-on service delivery, no ongoing programs in place to avoid the service delivery protests. Mm. Uh, Chopper saying, unfortunately, violence is the only language our government understands. This one's from at Gold Terry, who says, rethink their policies on how things should be done, pay the police and teachers properly, and don't give students and criminals so much rights. Khasa saying, government must stop promising, empty promises, and deliver, finish and clap. And this is what at Spooky uh, Genus has to say. He says, hold those stealing from communities accountable. Corruption and public, um, poor public service are the root cause. And yet people get redeployed as a consequence. Uh, this one from Al Wasam Picha. I think, I hope. <laughs> um, violent protests have become too costly for the economy. Life lost, uh, property destroyed, government needs to regularly consult with communities. Do members of parliament, for instance, hold any consultative meetings with their constituencies? Brilliant question there. Very. Do you know who your uh, member of parliament is? Not a clue. Who's your representative in parliament? Not a clue. That's why that, clue. that's what makes that such a good comment. Yeah. And Zandi says, uh, it's the ward councillors that are responsible. That's why they exist, uh, to be ears and eyes at community level. Still pray for the day government decides that if communities burn structures, they should not be replaced. Can't afford such waste. Destruction is unnecessary. It really, really is. Um, all right. Amazing, these tweets. We knew from the beginning that this would uh, invoke quite an emotional response from viewers. It really is, and we've got so many. We'll put more up on the screen a little bit later on. And the, and the reality is, is this is this is where we've gotten to, is that people feel that the only way they can be heard is if you go out and you basically uh, burn down the rear fire station. Yeah, and, 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 and that is so costly. It it's doesn't a work. Complex issue though, because we can sit here and be didactic about it all day. Yeah. The reality is that people are running a gauntlet every day in places like the Cape Flats, Bonteyville, Mannenberg, you name it on the Cape Flats, in places like Westbury, in places like Etwatwa, as I was saying this morning, Eldorado Park. These are people's lived realities yeah. where they are not safe, where they are innocent victims of mm. gunfire, where gun gangs are actually fighting for turf. This and something it. needs to be done about this. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more because remember in this very Westbury, some uh, years ago, if it's not you know, uh, three, four years ago, there was a story about um, one of the kingpins, one of the drug lords, where they found the bodies of seven young men that were buried in the backyard of uh, this drug lord's yeah. grandmother's uh, place, apparently. Here in Westbury, it's literally five kilometers down exactly. the road Just from where road. we are sitting right now. Yeah. So you have these ongoing situations. The police know yeah, who that, the drug lords that's what are. I wanted to the add. community has come out saying they have given the names. They've provided evidence to the police who've done nothing. Yeah. And so that, where to from the there? Point. That's the point because the reality is and you've heard from every single one of the people that we've spoken to, the residents in that area, they are begging 
for a decent police station, for a, d a decent police force to protect them in the area. So Firetown Police Station, according to these viewers, or the, 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 the residents in this area, do absolutely nothing and they turn a blind eye to the drugs, to the violence, to the gangsterism, and to those deaths where people, where they say, are being buried on a weekly basis because of this violence. And just for good measure, on that same story of the seven bodies that were found, there was a book found with the names of police officers, their names, their cell phone numbers. And what happened? And this was one of uh, the uh, kingpins. I think his name is... Uh, I'll think about it. I'll try and remember his name. Uh, but uh, maybe I'm scared. But anyway, we'll try and come back to his name all the wow, same later wow. on as soon as I remember it. But you know what? We, we, we actually uh, will talk more about this when we read more of your messages because these are the realities that play out yeah. in these areas. But of course, right. Valen standing by. And uh, yeah, well, let's hear from her uh, what's happening in uh, the sports news on the sports front. And uh, Bafana Bafana in the news.